Part of success in Silicon Valley is dependent on flexing one of the biggest muscles you have, your brain. How well can you focus? Can you stay up all night and code? But the other part of success is creativity. The ability to think outside the box, to have the breakthrough moment, a moment that could turn your millions into billions. The billionaires I know, almost without exception, use hallucinogens on a regular basis. Tim Ferriss is a Valley Insider. He's an entrepreneur, and he wrote the book about optimizing your time. His lifestyle insights have developed a cult-like following. The creativity comes from drugs. The, the people I know who are trying to be very disruptive and look at the problems in the world that exist and ask completely new questions. So they might look at something that's existed for hundreds of years and see something completely different. I mean, are people open about this? Is it a totally acceptable that sometimes you got to solve a really good problem and you just do these kind of drugs? Uh, the hallucinogens are, are discussed very openly in private settings, so people aren't ashamed of it. Using the smart drugs is like pouring gasoline on the fire, but the, the hallucinogens used very, very intelligently help you decide where to put the fire. Okay, so what exactly happens to your brain on psychedelics? Here's what science knows so far. Psychedelics stimulate serotonin receptors, a neurotransmitter tied to both mood and cognition. They also break down certain brain networks, allowing new patterns of communication to form. For example, you usually have one network that enables you to focus, to do things like math problems. You also have a brain network that allows you to be introspective, to think about yourself. These two networks are typically distinct, but when you're on a drug like LSD, the boundaries are blurred, disrupting patterns and allowing you to potentially make connections you might not in a conscious state. I was actually at a science fiction convention with a bunch of friends, and the Grateful Dead trucking came on the radio. And my girlfriend and I at the time sort of had this revelation of, Oh, that's why people listen to The Grateful Dead on LSD. It was the 4th of July in 1980 when Kevin Herbert first tried psychedelics. He's been using LSD for decades. Kevin currently works as an engineer for Cisco. How high would you say is the premium on creativity in Silicon Valley? I mean, everything we do is entirely creative. Everything requires creative solutions. You've built some new hardware that's incredibly complicated and you want to get it out to market very quickly, and you are bumping your head against problems all the time. It almost becomes an obsession, like, I just want to see console output. And LSD kind of fits into that because you get the sort of magical breakthrough. I would be at the Grateful Dead show, high in LSD during drums, and then something about my work would just come to me. I had been working on a problem for over a month, doing all this hardcore debugging, and I took LSD. I just realized, wait, the problem is in hardware. It's not a software problem at all. I come back to, you know, to work the next day, tell, tell my manager I had an epiphany. He, he laughs and says, oh, great, great show. And there's actually scientific proof that LSD could do just that. One study funded by the U.S. government in the 60s took a group of scientists and set them out to solve 48 different physics, math, and architectural problems. Problems that the scientists themselves had been unable to solve. Each scientist was guided through a psychedelic trip, at the end of which 44 of the 48 problems had found solutions. And psychedelics have a rich history in Silicon Valley. One of the most iconic users, Steve Jobs. I moved here to work in the Apple garage, building Apple Once. That was 1976. That's Daniel Kotke, one of Apple's first employees. And before we all knew Steve Jobs as the creator of one of the most successful companies in the world, Daniel knew him as the guy he used to trip with in college. It was a spiritual thing. Steve and I developed a friendship when we figured out that we had both read this amazing book called Be Here Now, hmm. which is about psychedelics and spirituality. You said that Steve had said that LSD was kind of one of the best things he ever did. Why, why was that? It expands your consciousness. It could have been mushrooms, it could have been peyote, it could have been any number of other things. Conversely, Steve was never really interested in smoking pot. That did not expand consciousness. Today, psychedelic research is having a renaissance. People in the industry say there are more studies now than there have been in decades. So there was a lot of research done in the 60s, then a little, little bit in the 70s, 
but funding for clinical research LSD dried up. You see the most cutting edge of the cutting edge in San Francisco. I mean, you see people printing organs. You see people prototyping things that are fundamentally change how all of us experience reality. We don't know as much about the human brain or body as we think we do. I mean, we're absolutely medieval. I think we're gonna look back in 10 years at our behavior now, and it's gonna look like bloodletting in the dark ages.